I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At seven minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your hostess. Here's a preview. Can you doubt for a fraction of a second that I love you? Even as you love me. And you're going to marry me. John, I... I can't marry you. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. Oh, easy, Pete, easy. It's not St. Patty's Day yet. Folks, a lot of people have always wondered if it always rains and it's cold and windy on St. Patrick's Day for the parade, whence comes the expression luck of the Irish? Whence comes, just like now, I'm going to explain it to you. We are going to have a contest at WNEW that's out of this world. All you have to do is send in cards, as many cards as you want, to luck of the Irish, WNEW 565 Fifth Avenue, New York, 10017. That's it. You don't even have to listen. Although that would be a heartbreaker, because St. Patty's Day will be out on the west portico of WNEW talking about the parade, carrying on, singing and dancing. You know the number we do every year. But we will be picking one card starting at 6 a.m. Friday, March the 16th, through 5 a.m. Sunday, March 18th. Once an hour, we pick a card. The name of that card wins 100 New York State lottery tickets. That's a $100 value. Now, one of those tickets could be worth up to $10,000 immediately and a chance to win $100,000 in the New York State lottery grand drawing. But you got to remember, this is only a chance, so you got to have the luck of the Irish. Don't pay attention to the weather. Pay attention to your announcer. Send your cards to Luck of the Irish, WNEW 565 Fifth Avenue, New York, 10017. Mail deadline Tuesday, March 13th. Well, it all started when my son Willard said, Dad, you just don't understand how it is to be in my shoes. And so I said, Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll do what you do for a day and I'll see how it is. Well, first it was great. I slept in till 20 minutes, too, like Willard does. But then after school, Willard told me... Um, the garage is dirty. Would you mind cleaning it up? And I told him... Um, I'll see about it later. Willard, and he said... Uh, 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 you'll see about it All now. right, all right. So I did. Good but grief. I wasn't very happy about it. Well, after supper, I thought I might catch a little TV, but then Willard reminded me... Um, don't you have homework to do? Two things I know for sure. One is... I'm going to work harder to understand how Willard feels. And two, I got to get Willard's shoes off. My feet are killing me. Listening, caring, and sharing. That's what understanding is all about. From the Mormons, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. This is Cicely Tyson. We're in a laboratory in the Carson Medical Institute one of the outstanding hospital research centers in the world. The distinguished biochemist, Dr. John Sanderley, sits alone in semi-darkness, surrounded by the complex paraphernalia of the lab, oblivious of everything except the sealed vial on a table before him. A vial glowing with a blue-whitish luminous substance, casting weird shadows on Sanderley's tortured face. John, it's Steiner, and Kendall is with me. John, we've been worried for both of you. Mary, where is she? Close the door. No, don't turn up the lights. Over here, please, by the table. What is this? I know you have questions. Why have Mary and I isolated ourselves here in our lab these many days and nights? Why have I not answered calls? Believe me, it had to be. Now I only ask your help and your silence. A silence? Yes. But you never reveal what you see in this room without my permission. Oh, but that is... Now, wait, 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 Carl. Look at John's face. He said he needs our help. How, John? The light from that vial on the table. I, I have never seen that color. That is why you are here. No two men alive are more qualified. That vial test its contents as you would a volatile gaseous substance, but never open the vial itself. I challenge you to tell me what it contains. I'll be waiting in here. Call me when you're done. But, John, we should... Mary, forgive my doubts, but it has been so long. I know no other way. 
And that's only the beginning of our story. Sears Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, No Greater Dream, by True Boardman. Our stars, Fletcher Markle and Peggy Weber. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where value is your byword. Sears, where America shops. Whisper Glide. Whisper Glide. Sears Best Whisper Glide Travis Rods offer you more features than any other line of Travis Rods anywhere. Whisper Glide. So if you're decorating or redecorating, choose these. Whisper Glide. Their design features remarkably smooth drawing. And Sears' own non-tilt carriers help keep your draperies straight. Best yet, there's a size and a style of Whisper Glide Travis Rods to fit just about every decorating idea. Whisper Glide. Our best at most larger Sears retail stores. The word's out and spreading fast about the jeans from Sears Men's Store that grow old beautifully. It's a sure sign they're fitting fine and feeling good. For the denim that keeps going strong a long time. Get them trim cut, regular cut, even get them pre-washed. The jeans that grow old beautifully. Now at most Sears retail stores. Hurry, hurry, step right up to most Sears retail stores for the Sears National Hardware Week sale. Take aim for special savings on these items. Save $20 on Sears Home and Shop Vacuum, now just $79.99. Get 20% off two sizes of trash cans, now sale priced from $10.99 to $12.99. And get as much as $8 off a single lever bathroom faucet. Take home big savings, real straight shooting at the Sears National Hardware Week sale. Hurry, hurry, prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. The precious vial rests in the center of the laboratory table. Testing equipment surrounds it. Kendall and Steiner are about to complete their work. They seem puzzled, confused. Carl, the nitrogen source. More. Open the valve. Oh, there's no point. The reading is minus 270. Virtually absolute zero, and still there's no reaction. No change of density. Mm. In fact, no evidence of density at all. What it can't be. Yeah, as I found with every spectrometric test. Magnetic spin resonance, electron spin, all of them. No reaction. Carl, do you realize that in all these hours of testing, we've proved only one thing? That the substance in that vial is no known element. It's incredible. Mm, perhaps not so incredible. One answer would explain many things. John's and his wife's determination to work alone. His demanding our silence. What do you mean? Well, if you had visions of the acclaim for a new discovery, a Nobel Prize, for example, would you not also take such pains for secrecy? Hmm? Suppose you realized you had accomplished a discovery, one such as the, the Curies achieved, or Thompson, or Seabock. You mean the discovery of a new atomic element? Precisely. But this substance, if it is a substance, has no evidence of atomic form. But it is there. Something is there. Oh, John. You heard? Your conclusion? Yes. Mm -hmm. You have both confirmed what I knew must be true. And now, good night. Good night? And that is all? We work here for hours and then a simple good night? <laughs> you dismiss us like student assistants. Carl, he warned us beforehand. But what right is he to treat us like this? If there is some breakthrough here, it is not his alone. Please go, both of you. John, be reasonable. Now, there's truth in what Carl says. Whatever it is you've achieved here, have we, your colleagues, not the right to know? We aren't asking to share. You cannot know. And if you knew, you could not understand. We could not understand? By God, I've had enough of this. Where are you going? To take that vial. You have no right to keep it to yourself. Sealed, I could not tell its contents. But if I break the vial... Carl, I warn you, if you touch that vial... What, you will stop me? No, my friend. No. <laughs> John. By God. You strike me, I will... 
Get off the car, no! No, let me go! In the name of heaven, what have I come to? Carl, forgive me, I... I'm not myself. But you don't know, you can't know. John, whatever it is that has driven you to such extremes, in friendship we want to know, and if we can, to help. Yes, I, I, I too would say that. And as for my actions just now... Well, you know, I am an impulsive fool sometimes. But you will admit it is all very strange. This work that we have done on a, a substance that is no substance. I'm tired. I'm very tired. John, you can't go on alone like this. You're exhausted. You need help. Trust us. Wait. Wait here, please. Mary, some word. Now. A sign. I don't want them to know, but perhaps with their help, somehow. Do I go back out there? Do I trust them, Mary? My darling. A single word. John? I have your promise. Absolute secrecy. You have mine. How can you ask? Before we know. Carl. <sighs> Very well. I agree. You know, of course, that no research of mine in many years has been without Mary. And to understand fully, you should know of the beginning of our lives together. We met nearly 20 years ago, fresh from college... And from that moment on, I knew my life as a man and as a scientist would never be the same. We began our work together on genetic research. Mary was tireless, her energy driving both of us to near exhaustion. Finally, after many months, I persuaded her that we should take a week off to visit my parents on the family farm in Vermont. The effect of that visit on Mary was a kind of magic. John, it's so beautiful from up here. Why do you think I wanted to come here to the crest? Sit right there. Why right there? I'll sit and I'll tell you. Welcome to the very secret Sanderley Tronos. Tronos? My great-great-grandfather was a Greek scholar. Tronos is Greek for throne. He discovered this rock nearly 200 years ago. Six generations of Sanderley sons have been told about it by their fathers. As a matter of fact, I may be breaking the tradition and even letting a girl share it. <laughs> Move over a little. Uh, you know, I like you better on the farm. Because up here, you're a little mad. What about you? Here, you laugh. <laughs> You realize you never laugh in that lab. Well, somehow, electron microscopes and betatrons I don't find very funny. Look up at me again. Hmm? Just as you did then. Is this the face that launched a thousand ships and burned the topless towers of helium? New England's leading microbiologist quoting Marlowe? You'd prefer an excerpt from the Quarterly Journal of Microbiology? <laughs> Would that ever do you justice? Your eyes, your lips, all that is you. It's late. We'd better get back. Now sit still. John. How long can this go on? Each of us pretending that the other isn't oh, there. Please, John, take your arm away. How do we fulfill our lives, both of us? Endless hours experimenting with the very stuff of life. Our life itself, our own life, we ignore, deny. Now, don't turn away. Look at me. No. Look at me. Can you doubt for a fraction of a second that I love you? Even as you love me. And you're going to marry me. John, I... I can't marry you. The natural look really helps do something for a woman. The classic look does, too. 
Now there's a group of classic coordinates at Sears that really does up the natural look for spring. Everything in a nubby, texture-rich blend of polyester, rayon, and flax in two of this season's favorite colors, mauve or natural. Capture the double-breasted blazer, wrap skirt, straight-leg trouser pants, and open basket weave shirts. Sears Spring Coordinate Group in sizes 8 to 16 will really help do something for you at most larger Sears retail stores. I'm out of control. Be cool, be natural, take it light. But where do I start? With the basics like the new Pretty Natural Light Shaper from Sears. The Pretty Natural Light helps keep you smooth all day under your clothes, giving you a shape that's soft and natural thanks to the shimmery lightweight power net. Never intimidates because its control is moderate with a front panel that helps keep your tummy where you want it. Great! I'll ease into control with a Pretty Natural Light. It's new at larger Sears retail stores. Hurry, hurry, step right up to most Sears retail stores for the Sears National Hardware Week sale. Take aim for special savings on these items. Save 40% on total regular separate catalog prices for a 70-piece mechanics tool set. Now just $59.99. Save $40 on a 5-horsepower rototiller and $25 off an attractive 20-inch bathroom vanity and top. Take home big savings. It's Sears National Hardware Week sale. Hurry, hurry. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Look at me. Can you doubt for a fraction of a second that I love you? Even as you love me. And you're going to marry me. John, I... I can't marry you. You will. No, no. Now it's you who must listen. We can't marry because the summer I was 12 years old, my father and I were driving one night on a narrow mountain road south of Edmonton. Suddenly, as we approached a crest, headed towards us on our side of the road, came a car, insanely fast. We were struck head on. My father and the driver of that car were killed instantly. Dear God, and there you... Were there were three operations before it was over. And what I'm trying to say, there would never be another Sanderly boy for you to bring here to your secret Tronos. You see, I'm barren, John. And you think that really matters for us? Mary, the very essence of the work we do is for life. Thousands, perhaps even millions of children will be born to better, safer lives because of us. In a sense, they, all of them, will be part of us, the offspring of our love. But what of your dream? Of your own life beyond yourself? Your own child? The only dream I have is in your hands. For our life together, there can be no greater dream now or ever for me. Oh, my darling. A few days later, we were married. We had three precious days honeymoon and return to our work. Of the results of that work, I'm sure you both know. The real injustice is that you haven't received the Nobel Prize you both deserve. You know, your achievements together are a milestone. It was all still only the beginnings of the work we'd planned before. Before four months ago. Go on, John. Well, you may recall that around that time, Mary was away from the Institute for several weeks. She told me she needed some time away from the pressures of constant research. Of course, I agreed. Then, one night when I went home very late, Mary was waiting for me, a strange quietness about her as I held her in my arms. And there was a quality in her voice I'd never heard before as she looked up at me. John, we are richly blessed. More blessed than you can know. Blessed? But what? About these last weeks. I lied. I haven't been at the cabin on the lake. I've been to Mayo's. Mayo's? Yes. 
Are you ready for an irony, my dear? Considering the research on which we've spent our lives. I have leukemia. Dear God, no. Carswell has made every test. The condition is beyond arrest. I have at most six months to live. Dear God in heaven, I won't accept that. You must. We must both do more than accept. We must welcome what it can mean. We stand at this moment on the threshold of a magnificent adventure. Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Pardon me, miss, please. Uh, hi. Listen, I'm from the local radio station, and I understand you're the world's first female manhole digger. Yes, I'm terribly, terribly proud. You enjoy your work? Oh, yes, well, except for the headaches, the tension. That's when I take my high blood pressure pills. But high blood pressure usually has no symptoms. No symptoms at all, but the tension, every manhole is counting on me. Well, you may be tense, but high blood pressure is a separate problem. Yes, that's what my doctor said. Of course he did. Oh, she did. You have to follow your high blood pressure treatment every Every day, however you feel. Are you going to put this on the radio? Sure. Oh, well, I'd like to say hello to my agent who got me this job and thank my producer and the director. So be sure to remember to follow your treatment every day. And to learn more, the National High Blood Pressure Education Program urges you to consult your doctor, health department, heart association, or your local high blood pressure education program. Here's an important tax tip from the Internal Revenue Service. If you're 65 or older, there are some special tax breaks that you can claim. Like a double personal exemption. That's right, an extra $750 for yourself, and still another if your spouse also is 65 or older. And there are advantages if you decide to sell your home and move to a smaller place. There's also a tax credit for the elderly. They're all spelled out in one of IRS's free publications, number 554, Tax Benefits for Older Americans. You can get copies by calling the IRS toll-free number listed in your telephone directory, or you can order by mail. There's even an order form just for that purpose in each tax package. Use it to send for the Older American publication or any other IRS publication or form you need. Tax Benefits for Older Americans. Get all the details now so you can take advantage of the benefits on your tax return. The condition is beyond arrest. I have at most six months to live. Dear God in heaven, I won't accept that. You must. We must both do more than accept. We must welcome what it can mean. We stand at this moment on the threshold of a magnificent adventure. But Mary... No, wait. The dream we've shared. To find some ultimate key, an opening of the door that seemed forever closed. Here is that chance, my darling. Ours is a love stronger than life itself. Then why shouldn't it seek to serve beyond life... The search. The search which has underlain all of our seeking. The dream that is beyond all dreaming. The search for the soul. Yes. We can make of my death something that is deathless. Not with you as... No. Never with you. With me. We can use every iota of knowledge we have to at last bridge the chasm between the living and the dead. We may succeed where others have failed. The Curies, the Conan Doyles, Houdini and his wife. We shall plan from this moment on. We will face my death for the inevitable phenomenon it is. But as scientists, with the detachment we must have to know and understand. Oh, John, you must agree. In this way, we can give a meaning to my death. A glorious meaning. If I do agree, it can only be after I've given you every test myself. If Carswell at Mayo's was wrong... No, he's not wrong. Yes, you shall convince yourself. Then we will begin. 
The two goals, John. Remember, we discussed them years ago. The isolation of the soul itself to prove that it exists as an entity apart from the body it is known. And then, communication with that soul after it has left its host. Exactly. Oh, and we have so very much to do. We must find and study every report, every theory, every experiment that has ever been made. Somewhere there's the answer. And we shall find it. We shall find it. So it began. In the weeks that followed, Mary and I searched and found every book, every article, every research report in any of the languages either of us knew which concerned the phenomena of death. Seeing superstition in most, fallacy of reasoning in many, sheer blindness in others. However, in those reports we deemed most credible, there was general agreement that the soul force left the body after death, from what the Indians refer to as a chakra center, here at the throat, or here at the forehead, the place of the third eye. As to the soul substance, different observers gave it vastly different shapes and sizes. Therein lay the ultimate problem, how to isolate a substance of whose form we could not be sure. But then, very late, one night over a month ago, Mary appeared from the bedroom, a wonder of excitement in her eyes as she came to me. We've been fools, John, dear. It's all so simple. I know the way. You know? Just now. It was all there in a dream. The answer we've been searching for. Listen, my darling. In my dream, I was in a house, lying on some kind of a slab, and I knew I was dying. I got up, and I walked out the door of the house. Only then I was in a bigger house. And as I started out of that house, I stopped and said to myself, I don't want a bigger house. I want a smaller one. And I suddenly found myself holding a tiny miniature of a house in my hand. And I looked at it laughing. <laughs> John... I laughed myself awake. It's so clear what my subconscious is trying to tell us, don't you see? We've been assuming there was no self-determination in the soul itself. No power to alter its own form. Well, why should that be? All we need do is provide the means for the soul to isolate itself in the form of its own choosing at the time of death. Yes, if that could be. But for demonstrable proof, the conditions must be completely under control, a methodology beyond dispute. The methodology is really quite simple. We're going to build a coffin, my coffin. Mary! Together we're going to build it, of special, leaded glass, hermetically sealed, except for a single outlet, above which will be an inverted vial. And into that vial, at the moment of her so-called death, the soul of Mary Helen Sanderley shall pass and for so long as it benefits the cause we serve shall by her will remain and so began the final stage in our preparation the building of the shrine to certainty as we chose to call it since I could not bear to think of it as a coffin within a week of constant labor virtually day and night here in our lab it was finished it was then Mary begged me that we should not leave the hospital at night but have cots here in my inner office. I knew why she asked, and I agreed. And then... Yes, John, go on, and then... Three nights ago, Mary was nearing the critical moment. I was seated beside her bed, head in hands, when after a long silence she spoke to me. Her voice calm and sure, and utterly without fear, as she said... John, it's time. At last, at blessed last, it's time. This stethoscope, I... No, I... there's no need. I know, and I'm ready. You know, you must know that I'm not afraid. How could I be? If only everyone who faced death could have done the research we've done these last weeks. 
Then they too would know. There's nothing to fear. Oh, Mary. You know how I feel? As if I'm about to board ship for a wondrous voyage. Knowing that you'll still be back here on the shore. Waiting to hear from me. And remember, the contact. We must try to achieve it alone. Just we two. Yes, yes, we two alone. And now, my darling, I'm ready. It's waiting. Our shrine of certainty. Mary, I, I'm oh, not sure. You must. Now, now carry me, John. Uh, oh. oh, yes. Your arms are trembling, my darling. Oh, gently. Let me down gently. This is not goodbye, John. We both know that. It's just to bless me on the journey. With your love. John, forgive me that there was never a child. Our child. Forgive you? You've given me more than any man could ever deserve, Mary. The, the cover quickly. This little time. Only for a little while. Until the cover, John. And as Mary lay there, a smile of utter peace and acceptance on her face, I placed the cover over the glass enclosure and quickly, despite the tears that flooded my eyes, sealed it closed. Then, as we had agreed, I extinguished the only light to sit in the silent darkness, waiting, watching, half prayerful, half fearful. What had I done? Had I perhaps helped to shorten Mary's life in the interest of some theory impossible to prove? I stared into the darkness, my anxiety growing with each passing moment until I was near despair. And then, where there had only been blackness, there was the beginning of light coming forth there within the coffin, as if from the center of Mary's forehead, at first a whitish, evanescent light that was more than light, formless at first, then becoming almost a spectral image of Mary herself. And then before my eyes, I saw that substance, that form above her, begin as by her will to change, diminish in scope, and alter its actual color. Then, still as if guided by some force, it made its way to the single outlet and out through that opening to the vial. I moved forward, shut the valve leading to the vial, closed the seal of the vial itself and raised it up to hold it, a glowing thing apart in my hand. Remarkable. Incredible. Beyond belief. Is it, Carl? Are you saying that in our shrine of certainty there is not certainty? I did not say that. No, you did not have to. Come, both of you, in here. Mm. Now, is it still beyond belief, Carl? Oh, dear God, she does look beautiful. That smile of peace, of surety as if she knew that they had succeeded in their search, even at the very moment of death. Oh, now? Now that you've seen, please. John, you must forgive us if we doubted. I do. After all, there was a time I doubted myself. I think within that glowing vial that I actually held in my hands an hour ago, the human soul. An amazing possibility. Possibility? After all, what has been proven? Only that something, some who knows what, was emitted from the dying body, but that it is the soul? <laughs> Where's the proof of that? Please leave. Both of you. Now! Ah, there is an answer in your silence. Uh, this is the way of science? John, now you yourself said the experiment was in two parts. The isolation of the soul substance, then communication after that had been accomplished. What of the second part? Have you achieved that? No, I have not. And you've tried? Have I tried? God knows how I have tried. And I shall go on trying. For how long? Now suppose 
Having gone this far, you yourself can go no further. Are you sure enough in your faith to allow one other test? A test by someone who has claims to knowledge and how to communicate beyond the grave? No, there can be no one else. Mary and I... No, let, let, let me finish. There's a psychic whose works I've read who claims that he has communicated with individuals who have died. And the man's here. Here, John, in this city. Now, you must have heard of him, Valmera. I know of him, and all he claims may be true, but now still... Now, think of her now. Think of your Mary and her dreams for this adventure of yours. In fairness to her, if you yourself cannot make that final bridge, and there's the chance another can, should you refuse to try? Let me try to reach Mara and bring him here for her sake, John. Send for him. I will stay here alone and still try alone. But if you return with Mara and I still have failed, it shall be as you propose. And may God forgive me if that is wrong. Understand you type fast. Yes. Accurate? Well... That's okay. You'll be typing on Sears' exclusive corrector electric typewriter with easy correction and more. It's Sears' best. Try typing Sears' corrector typewriter. Whoops. Now, first, Sears is S-E-A-R-S, not Z. So, backspace to the incorrect letter. Tap the correction key. Now the mistake is blocked out. Next, type the correct letter. Then proceed. Yes, Daddy. Are we finally set for Grandma's? I think so. We've got the new Sears Travel Guard baby seat in the car. Right, and the extra sleep and play baby suits. Oh, Grandma will love those. They're so cute and yet practical. The extra baby blankets and bottles are in the vinyl diaper bag. Oh, Sears certainly did make shopping for the baby easy. Sure did. Well, I think we've got everything. Um, honey, I think you've forgotten something. Hmm? <gasps> the baby! <laughs> <laughs> Our family is growing pretty big these days. We've got family members in nine different states, and Sears sure comes in handy. We can select gifts at the Sears near us, then bring them along on visits to our daughter in Seattle and my brother in Miami. And if what we bought isn't just right for them, they go to the Sears near them and exchange it. That's Sears. In their stores or through the catalog, Sears is where America shops. Sears, 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 where America shops. Cicely Tyson again, and here's the concluding act of No Greater Dream. Then we do understand each other, Dr. Mara. Whatever the results of your assistance in this matter... You must be certain of my silence, I know. But, gentlemen, are you sure your Dr. Sandeli wishes me involved in this matter? He needs help, Dr. Mara. A help perhaps only you can provide. Dr. Mayor, you have no objection if we of the staff are also present? Who is to be present is not for me to determine. Come in. Dr. Valmara, Dr. John Sanderley. Doctor, I salute you. There are so many of us who have for so long desired that a scientist of your stature would undertake this exact research. Let us be on with it. The vial, it's in here. There, Dr. Mara, on the table before you. <sighs> Remarkable. Remarkable. But the vial so small, and the color strange, strange. Well, let us proceed. You gentlemen will be seated around the table, please. I shall, in the next few moments, enter a state you would call a trance. In that state, I myself may possibly make contact with the departed soul of Mary Sanderley. But if that fails, I have a guide on the other side whom I shall call on to assist me. His name is Michael. Virtually never has Michael failed. From each of you present, I ask only silence and an open mind. And now, absolute silence, please. Oh, 
Before the proof? Ridiculous. Carl, if John wishes it... You want a verdict? <laughs> I will give it to you. Hypnosis. A kind of self-hypnosis begun upon yourselves by you and Mary that you have tried to exert upon us all. Well, not for me. Uh, there is nothing superhuman within that vial. John, I'm, I'm sorry. Dr. Mara, perhaps now it's impossible to proceed. We seekers have long had to contend with such minds. Please... Let's begin again. Let us relax calmly at peace with the present. It was impossible. All research that has been done has visualized the soul in larger, freer form and of a color different from what is in that vial. In this case, I am afraid the man who left us, unfortunately, was correct. Intentionally or not, you have deceived yourself and all whom you wish to make believe. Get out. Both of you, get out of here. John, I, I'm sorry. Go. Just... Leave me alone. Oh, John. That was not the way. Mary. From the beginning, it had to be only between ourselves. But we have made the contact. Now, at last. Others must hear and know. Let me call them back. No. For the proof we sought to give the world, it is not yet. Even you were not strong enough. You called the others because you could not trust your faith. And now the plan is altered. Now I must go. But where? Tell me. I am called. Don't despair, my darling. Our magnificent adventure was a beginning. And someday others, with as great a love, will be wise enough to carry it on to its fulfillment. And now, I am going. The call is stronger. Where is it you go? You will know, and soon. For W, you will know and understand. For W. For W, what does it mean? Goodbye, my darling. The light is fading. Mary, stay there within the vial. You must have the power to stay. No. I am called. Goodbye. Oh, God in heaven, why? 4W, what could... It can't be. 4W! 
four W. Doctor Sanderley, what? Well, what is it, sir? Well, what is this? You can't... Dr. Sanderley, aren't you Dr. Sanderley? Yes, and this is 4W. Well, yes, but I'm sorry you know that without mask and gown you shouldn't be well, in what, here. What's happening here? What has happened within this room, within 4W, these last few minutes? What makes you think anything unusual has happened here? Tell me. Well, the fact is, I delivered a child... A premature boy child for the young woman still there on the table. And she doesn't yet know the infant was stillborn. When? Two, three minutes ago. But now I must ask Dr. you... Dr. Thomas? Uh, uh, what, what, what is it? Over here. The baby. He was dead, doctor. Born dead. You said he was. And look, his little hands. They're moving. Impossible. Impossible, doctor? Impossible if you only knew. is a playground of texture at Sears Junior Bazaar. Our classic blazer is touchable in cotton and polyester terry. Push the collar and the sleeves up, wrap it close, or let it breeze open. Slip a saucy pointel top underneath and you've got contrast. Or let each go solo in the sunshine. Finish with crisp coolness in polyester and cotton, poplin wrap skirts, and pleated pants. All mix and matchable in neutral and earthy tones from Junior Bazaar at most larger Sears retail stores. Hey, look, in here, inside this stylish man's dress shirt. I'm a Sears Value dress shirt label, just popping with pride. Because Sears Value dress shirts are sure to be popular for a number of reasons. They have fashion spread collars, come in classic patterns and solids in short sleeves. You'll appreciate the permapressed polyester or polyester cotton blends for easy care. Plus, at low value prices, what a buy. Just look for me, the Value dress shirt label at Sears Men's Store, where style, sense, and satisfaction combine to label me right for you. Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The Power Spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power Spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops. No Greater Dream was written, produced, and directed by True Boardman. Your hostess was Cicely Tyson. Our stars were Fletcher Markle and Peggy Weber. Also heard were Jack Crucian, Barney Phillips, and Marvin Miller. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. Hey, buddy, can you give a fella a break? Sorry, fella, I only give at the office. I'm not looking for a handout. What can I do for you? Help save my life and breath. Do you need mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing? I'm not the type. No, but you're smoking. And your smoke is hitting me where I breathe. And what with an allergy and pollution, you're not helping any. Sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. Sure, but the fact is that your smoke is getting in my eyes, and nose, and throat. And that's not a good song for my lungs. Well, you could always move away. I do, and then there's another one puffing away in my face. How about a deal? Like the Lung Association says, smoke if you must, but make smoking a private affair. Or, or quit. Secondhand smoke is truly offensive for non-smokers. Well, I'll give it a try. I wish you would, otherwise. Otherwise, they're going to hang a tag on you. A tag? Yeah. Cigarettes are a health hazard, and so are you. Gotcha, buddy. Now, about that handout... Save it. 
Let me give you one. Your lung association says that giving up smoking is a matter of life and breath. I was playing in a band for a few years on the road. We never ate very well, but we were having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> no, really. But the band sort of folded up and went to work as a welder. My health was improving except for my smoker's cough. I was doing pretty good. What happened? The American Heart Association did a high blood pressure screening at the plant. I couldn't believe it. Mine was so high. I made them check it again. They told me to see my doctor right away, but... When did you have the heart attack? It was about six weeks later. Somehow I just knew it was happening and managed to get into the office and told him to call an ambulance. I was 24. The American Heart Association wants you to know that heart attack is not restricted to the elderly. It can happen at any age. You owe it to yourself to be aware of the risk factors and to know what you can do to lessen your chances of heart attack. For free information on heart attack and its risk factors, contact your American Heart Association. We're fighting for your life. Tomorrow, Sears Radio Theater will be a story of adventure with Richard Widmark as your host. Let's listen. I smuggle armaments all over the China Sea. It's, it's very good business. I pick them up cheap in Vietnam. The whole country is knee-deep in guns the American Army threw away. I run them to Sumatra, Malaysia, Celebes, Mindanao, you name it. So be sure and tune in tomorrow to the Sears Radio Theater.